Hello world, this is Random Fix. In this video today, we're going to be trying out the Allway 560 watt hour portable power station right here. And this is it right here, guys. And so far, I've used this for about two weeks now. And in this review today, I'm going to go ahead and cover some of the things that I love about the unit, some things that we can improve. And finally, we're going to go ahead and give this a random fix score so you can make a better decision for yourself. Hi everybody, welcome back to the channel here. And if you guys are new to the channel, you guys know I review portable power stations like this. And I then go ahead and give them a grade so you guys can make a better decision for yourself. So we got the Allway 560 watt hour lithium portable power station. And this thing's pretty cool. I've had it for about two weeks. And in this video today, I'm going to cover with you guys the unit, some things that I love about it and some things that maybe you should pay a little more attention to and I'm going to show you guys this in use we're going to go ahead and put the different ports to the test and then we're going to go ahead and give it that random fixed score so the, here's the unit and the unit actually has a really good feel guys it's got this nice handle and the handle is nice because if you make a little box or something for this in your camper van or in your car and you want to go ahead and make sure that it's going to be easy to go ahead and design a box because it just has to be square this is going to be it and then when you do have to move the unit you can just grab it by the handle and lift it up and this unit is actually not that heavy so that's pretty nice that it's really nice and portable so let's go ahead and begin with the right side here we have the DC input. So this is how you're gonna go ahead and charge it. So we have a regular 120 volt adapter here that plugs into your home power and you plug it in and the unit starts charging. And it's kind of nice because it displays for you what the state of charge is. So it has the bars and it has a percentage. And I've seen other units that just have the bars but this is a little bit faster and easier to understand when you have both so that's kind of cool and there's three different ways of charging this so you can use the adapter that's included and then you can also go ahead and grab yourself one of these plugs right here and I'll have a link to anything that I talk about in the video description down below as well as any coupon codes that can save you a bunch of money and you can go ahead and connect solar panels and input them right here and you can go ahead and charge up to I believe a hundred watt panels here and all it makes a couple of solar panels themselves and I'll include those in the description box below as well and you can go ahead and charge it that way so that's option number two for charging and then option number three for charging is going to be using the provided car lighter adapter here and we'll go ahead and try this out in a little bit and you basically just plug it in and you can charge off your cigarette lighter. Let's go ahead and plug the unit into the car cigarette lighter. And after a few seconds we can see it says input and currently it's charging at a rate of 34 watts and it's going to take about three hours to charge so this is looking pretty good. And so if you were making a long road trip, this unit could definitely charge itself on that drive and you can go and enjoy your weekend. Pretty cool and easy. The next thing we can do is we can go ahead and turn on these DC, which stands for direct current port. So we got a cigarette lighter adapter right here. So if you happen to have a 12 volt refrigerator like I do in my van right there, and they're amazing if you guys ever want to get one try to get one of the chest style ones instead of the traditional ones that have the door in the front because they're a lot more energy friendly so you can go ahead and plug that in here and you can go up to 10 amps and then we got two additional DC outputs right here and these are rated at 3 amps and this plug and this plug are the same so if you wanted to buy a 10 pack of plugs and make your own harnesses you could do that it's very very easy and I'll have a link to that in the video description down below the next thing that we have right here is going to be the USB so we got USB C 60 watts out times 2 so we have two of these 
and and we have USB right here and we have two of those connectors here and I got myself a regular USB connector right here I'm gonna go ahead and connect that in there and I also have a USB-C connector right here and I got a spare device and whether I'm using the USB-C or the USB 3.0 it is not going to be the rapid charge so I'm going to show you guys the difference a little bit later when we use a regular plug so I am a little disappointed with the USBs right here that they're not going to be the rapid chargers because the rapid charging is going to be a little bit faster and just goes and provides a little bit more additional power so right now off the USB-C is pumping out 4 watts to the phone here and on the USB 3.0 both are rated about 4 watts so it'll jump around a little bit and to the left I have the flashlight which has a couple of different settings and if you double tap it it has a SOS function and underneath that we have these AC plugs right here so these are the household plugs alternating current and when you hit that button right here we have alternating current we have the DC logo right here we have the USB logo right here so I'm gonna go ahead and turn off the other two and this thing is kinda nice because if you don't have anything connected to it for 12 hours and is putting out less than 2 watts it'll go ahead and power off the unit so that way you don't go ahead and drain the battery all the way down when not in use and let's try that same phone now plugged into the wall charger here and we'll see the difference so right now it lets me know that it's rapid charging so these two right here are gonna be the regular charging and this is the fast charging or rapid charging so I wish these were the rapid chargers or fast chargers right here but they're not and one other thing that I want to mention is some of the units that I've tested before with the USB-C connectors they're bi-directional so it's kind of nice when you can go ahead and charge it through here or charge it through here. On this unit, we only have one input. So if you're at home and you're leaving for a trip, you can't just take out a USB-C charger and plug it into the wall at the same time and be out of there in a total of maybe two hours or an hour. And we're going to go over the charge times of this unit now. So this unit takes about six to seven hours to charge. And the display will let you know once you got it plugged in and how long it's going to take and once you get really close into the 90 percent range it'll go ahead and display it for you minutes we got about eight to ten hours with solar panels with 80 watt panels and if you're just going to use the car charger that's included it's going to be take between eight to nine hours on a long drive and this is the box right here so it came pretty well packaged up and surrounded by styrofoam and everything was included that to get going. I wish it did include some other adapters because some of the 300 amp hour units actually came with the solar charge cables. They're called MC4 connectors and this one did not. However, this will go ahead and work on laptops, drones, the CPAP machines, fans, cameras, lights, tablets, and mini fridges. And the battery on this is going to be a lithium. It is not going to be a lithium iron phosphate battery, which is what I normally recommend. And the reason the lithium iron phosphate batteries are recommended is because they have a longer lifespan. And now let's go ahead and put the unit to the test by putting it on a device that's going to consume a little more power than your average phone, which is going to be a portable heater so this is going to be the portable heater that I used on my 24 state trip that I just got back from and 
it works. So if you have a well insulated van, you can get away with a 200 watt heater just like this. And let's go ahead and plug this in. And I'm going to show you guys this unit is actually able to power this heater here for a total of three hours. So that's kind of nice because now you don't have to worry about propane, diesel heaters, and it's a simple switch. So you can see that the display here is letting us know that it's consuming about 223 watts. And the nice thing is if I wanted to, I could plug the unit in and also charge it at the same time. If the charger doesn't put out as much power as the unit is obviously consuming, that's not going to be a very good idea. However, if you wanted to go ahead and leave this plugged in and not have to go and unplug everything, you can. So now we can see that the unit is consuming a total of 201 watts once it's gone and settled. So this unit is actually able to power on this portable heater here for a total of about three hours. And the nice thing when you're using a lithium battery, like what's in here, is the current doesn't drop like in a traditional acid battery. And the same thing with the DC outputs right here. If you had your refrigerator plug in and the unit went down to 20%, the voltage is not going to drop down to 10 volts. And this is going to go ahead and give you a constant voltage of above 12 volts so that refrigerator can actually stay on. And the unit is putting out some really, really good heat here. So again, if you're looking for a great heater and a great combination, so you don't have to use a Mr. Buddy heater or go and do a two or $3,000 diesel heater install in your van. This can work for you right here. And I did not have to turn on my diesel heater once on my three month long trip. So check that out. And let's go ahead and plug this in and make sure that this, the display is actually accurate. So I got myself a little watt meter here. And we're gonna go ahead and plug it in so we can see that we're taking about 202 watts I'm going to unplug it plug it into here and this is really really accurate check that out guys we are at 201 202 watts and this is at 200 watts so we're basically one two watts within range so very accurate unit as far as the output of the power with the heater running let's go ahead and try to put a little bit more of a load on this inverter here so you can see the unit can actually operate the heater and the compressor at the same exact time which is nice and this unit is able to go ahead and put out 500 watts of sine wave power and sine wave is really important guys if you're running a computer or you're charging electronic devices you always want to try to use a sine wave power source versus a modified power source just because it's a lot cleaner and you're not going to have any kind of issues with the devices I've seen mouses freeze on computers all kinds of little glitches start happening when you start using a modified power source. So a sine wave is the way to go. And this unit is actually able to go ahead and put out a total output of 1000 watts maximum and continuous about 500 watts. And in case you go ahead and overload the unit, you can go ahead and just hit this button and turn it back on and it will go ahead and reset the AC power. And you, these units right here cannot operate things like microwave ovens, cooktops, and hair dryers. So don't try to go ahead and power up those units using this. And we're going to go ahead and let this run all the way up. So we can go ahead and test the unit. And that is so strange. I just plugged it in and it says fast charging. So we'll let this go ahead and run. Okay, so it went ahead and got the compressor to 
of the capacity and the phone is charging the heater still on and we are at 88 percent and heaters nice and hot phone is charging and no glitches um, the only glitch I've noticed so far is when I first started using it it wouldn't say fast charge so I don't know if it's something on the port or on my wire so let's go ahead and plug in the unit to power here and as we can see the unit is actually putting out 200 watts here the charger is rated at 120 so it quickly readjusts and lets us know the way we're going we have another four or five hours left and that's pretty cool and let's go ahead and turn off the actual heater here and when we turn off the heater we can now see that the display switched to input and that we are currently inputting 103 watts into the power bank here so that's actually a pretty good speed I have seen other chargers on the market that may run you about two or three hundred dollars more that can charge a little faster but if that's not important to you and you like the savings this thing definitely looks like a winner now that we know that the unit can go ahead and power on a heater an air compressor and a phone at the same time without any glitches let's go ahead and give it a random fixed tool grade so you can make a better decision for yourself so now is my favorite part of the video this is where we're going to go ahead and give this a random fixed tool grade so you can make a better decision for yourself and so this unit right here is going to get a total score of 63 out of 100 and one thing to keep in mind with the scoring factor here is depending on what you're looking for this might be the perfect unit for you and 63 out of 100 is actually not a bad score and the things that would help this unit score a little bit better is if they included a wireless charger on top of the unit here and change of the battery chemistry to lithium iron phosphate that would be great and make these ports right here bi-directional so that way we could go ahead and, and charge it from the USB-C as well as the regular input right here so I hope you guys found the video to be helpful if you guys got any comments please leave them down below if there's any coupons or special pricings please check them out in the video description down below as well I really appreciate it check out the whole portable power station playlist here if you guys want to learn more about how to use these some of the benefits and also some of the drawbacks have a great day thanks again